قبل ما تبدا بس السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. May peace and blessings of Almighty Allah be on all of you. My name is Muhammad Abdullah. I'm an Egyptian who's been living in Hong Kong for the past three plus years. I'm working in a shipping company here in Hong Kong. So I'm not like the scholar of Islam. I'm just a Muslim. I'm a student also in a university called the American Open University, which we can study overseas about Islam. It's based in the U.S. I've been involved in, in da'wah, which is calling people to Islam and making awareness campaigns for almost two plus years in Hong Kong. And we're giving lectures on a weekly basis, myself and my friend and brother, Wael Ibrahim, and, and another masjid, Ammar Masjid in Wan Chai. And uh, when they told me about this course, I said I would definitely like to participate because I would like to share whatever knowledge I have with non-Muslims because I do have a big and huge respect for people who come and try to find the truth through the authentic sources and would listen and know about what they're looking for from the, the source itself rather than having it from you know television or even internet which is sometimes not authentic so I really respect and I would like to thank you really for, for taking this step and, and sparing some of your time to come and know more about Islam today I chose a topic called manners in Islam or the importance of manners in Islam and the reason why I chose this topic is that before non-Muslims, Muslims themselves, they tended to neglect this very important aspect about the religion. I'm not generalizing, I'm just saying that a lot of Muslims, they tend to not realize the importance of such a topic in our religion. And you will see when we go through this topic that it is actually much, much more important than things that you have already learned in this course. And you will see how important that that manner is, or the manners, or the teachings of Islam is, and how it shapes a lot of things around us. So before I start, I would like to ask you a question. Do you know what is the biggest Muslim country in the world in terms of population? Uh, Indonesia. Indonesia, correct. The second question would be, how did Islam spread in places like Indonesia, Malaysia, from Kenya, traders. from? Traders. Traders. So what did these traders do? Did they go there as missionaries and started preaching no. Islam? Business? They wanted to do business. So the question would come, how did these traders manage to spread Islam in these countries? When they were not going as missionaries. Because we know, like for instance, when the British came here to Hong Kong or any other location, they would have people from the church, they would have people, you know, businessmen, but they would have definitely representatives from the church. So how did these people spread Islam in a place like Indonesia? Through contact. Through manners. The people, when they started interacting with those traders, and then they realized certain features and aspects and characteristics like honesty, integrity, and, and being straightforward, and not just while doing business, even in their daily lives. And we will see this when we come later on what exactly do I mean here by the term manners? And what manners am I talking about? And the same has applied in places like Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, the eastern parts of Africa, and even in the US, and even in Europe, and certain northern and central Europe, you had immigrants going there, not necessarily traders and merchants, but you had immigrants going there, like us here in Hong Kong, myself and the brothers who have been giving this course, none of us is here in Hong Kong to work as a full-time preacher, we're all just normal Muslims, and what we do is we share, we convey the message. And this is through lectures. But when, once you start interacting with certain Muslims who really follow the religion inside out, you will have these questions popping into mind. Like, why are you acting in such a way? Why are you talking in such a manner? And then you will realize this is actually because they're following the teachings of Islam. Another question would be, what was the main reason for the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to be sent to mankind? If you ask yourself this question, we talked about how Islam spread in these countries. The second question would be, what was the main mission of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? If you ask anyone, including Muslims, why was your messenger sent? What will he say? What will he say? To teach people. To teach people about? How to live. Exactly. People think that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came to our world to teach us how to pray, 
how to fast and how to give charity. And they'd stop there. And they would stop there. And they would think that it's mainly all about worshipping your Creator. When in fact, listen to this tradition, which is an Arabic called Hadith, which are the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He said, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لُؤْتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمِ الْأَخْلَاقِ I have been only sent to you to perfect your manners. I have been only sent to you to perfect your manners. One would question and would say, I need to think deeper. What does it mean that I just came to perfect your manners? When you look at Arabia during that time, before the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent, you will see that they were worse than animals living in a jungle. At that time, manhood was whoever is tougher, whoever is more vulgar, he's considered man, a man, a true man, a leader, a strong man. And let me give you an example. During that time, in Arabia, when the Muslims, you know, not, not the Muslims, when the people over there used to have a child, and then they would discover that it's a girl, not only they would kill it, but they would bury it, her, the baby, alive. Just imagine with me how cruel these people were. Women at that time were also considered a commodity. Women used to go around when, for example, you have visitors who used to come to Arabia and Mecca to come and do trade. Part of welcoming them was to give their women, and they would like, like see that let go their women walking around naked in the streets. As a, you know, I'm giving you a present, I'm giving you a gift. This is how the nature of the people were there. This is how people, the brief, it's even much worse. This is how people used to be. This is how people used to act. Another question is, today when you look at the majority of the Muslim countries, you would see that they are a bit backward. They are not as developed as countries like Hong Kong, China, US, and, and majority of European countries. Some people don't really know what is the main reason. And the main reason, again, it's linked to the manners. What happened to these countries because of the unbelievable corruption? And the corruption has also been in religious bodies and religious organizations that people are taught Islam in a wrong manner that the most important thing is the way you look or the most important thing is to pray. The most important thing is to memorize the Quran from cover to cover. These are all important aspects but they tend to neglect a very, important act, a very important part of Islam, which is manners. Here you would see people are honest. You would see people who are very um, sincere when they work. I'll give you a shocking statistics. You know, this has been done by a Western organization. I totally forgot the name. After eight hours of work, do you know how many hours in Western world, and places like Japan, Korea, and even here, after eight hours, the working hours, do you know how much are the pure working out without distractions, without, you know, cigarette breaks, you know, out of eight hours in the West, how many hours are really utilized in working? Two or three. Two or three? What do you think, sir? Just throw a number. <laughs> Four. Four? It's six hours. Six hours in the Western developed countries. Six hours out of eight, at least, is the average what people spend to work with sincerity. You know, in the Arab world, I'm not talking about the Muslim world, I'm talking specifically about the Arabs. Because the Arabs are just 250 million out of 1.5 billion Muslims. In the Arab world, you know what is the, the statistics? 15 minutes. Out of 8 hours. 15 minutes. Despite that they are there, sitting on their seats for 8 hours and pretending that they're working, it's only 15. So, do you now see a hint why these people are backward? Because why? There's no honesty. There's no honesty, there's no integrity, there's no sincerity when doing their jobs. This is again related to leaving the Islamic teachings. And we will see this also when we move forward. So this is basically a quick intro to Yes. What, what do you, why, why do you say that they are so not motivated to do honest work? Okay, can, we, can I answer this after yes. the lecture? Maybe I'll ask it uh, along, the, along, the, along the way. Let's listen to this story to see how important manners is. I'll tell you, so you don't have to read it, just it's there after that. The companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they went to him. And they told him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, we heard about a lady. This lady is known to be perfecting her prayers. 
she fasts for Lord. She gives a lot of charity. So these are all forms of worship, right? Prayers, charity, fasting. However, her neighbors, not everyone, just her neighbors, they don't feel safe from her tongue, her evil tongue, and what she says, and her acts, her evil acts. What did the Prophet say? The peace be upon him say? She's in hellfire. She's in hellfire. So it's not just how much you pray, or how many times you pray, you pray, or how many, how, how much money you spend in charity. It's actually a mix of both. Another story also. The Prophet, peace be upon him, once had all the, the companions sitting next to him. And he said, do you know who is the bankrupt? So the, the, the obvious answer is, the bankrupt is a person who has no money, no wealth. Correct? So he said, no. The bankrupt is the person who would come on the day of judgment. And he has so many deeds from fasting, from praying, from giving charity, from doing pilgrimage. However, he would have slandered that person. He was dishonest to, the, dishonest to this person. He, were, he, he slandered, he gossiped. So what will happen on the day of judgment? People will start taking from his good deeds. You slandered me, right? You were gossiping. You talk about me. You cheated me. So Allah Almighty, what he will do, he will start taking from his good deeds and giving it to those people whom he acted wrongly against them. Till all his good deeds are gone. So what would happen? They would start, he would start taking from their sins. From his sins. Till he becomes bankrupt. He has no more good deeds, no more uh, blessings with him. And he will go straight into hell fire. So again, I will keep repeating the statement. It's not just prayers, <coughs> fasting, charity. A Muslim is a person who takes Islam as a whole, not just part of it. And this is what really a lot of Muslims neglect, sadly speaking. But this is not just only Muslims. Look at all religions, look at all cultures, you always see differences. You won't see everybody who is perfect. Now, I want to emphasize on something. What is more important then? What is more important then? Is it manners? Or is it the regular physical forms of worship. Who can answer? Yes, sir. I think uh, we need to be whole. 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 So you mean both? Yes. Correct? Anybody has a different answer? And after this introduction that I gave, do you think manners is more important? Or is it worshiping? I think both are important. Manners? And the brother said both. But the correct answer is both. The problem today is that you find a lot of people who are on one side of the story, right? You'll find people, and I have family friends and close friends, who do not pray at all. And they're very rich, and they're very, very good in health, but they never go to pilgrimage. And when you ask, what's the problem? I mean, what is stopping you from going to Hajj? What is problem? What's stopping you from praying? He would say, listen, man. It's not about worshiping only, you know, I have a big heart. I'm, I'm very kind to people, I try to make sure that I'm a good Muslim, I have good manners. That's amazing, but that's not enough. We know in Islam, the Prophet peace be upon him told us that the first thing that the Muslims will be asked on the year after, on the day of judgment, the first question, now it's called day of judgment, right? There will be judgment, like in court. How was your prayers? That's the first question that the Muslims will be asked. Not just Muslims, by the way, everyone will be asked, how was your prayer? And the Prophet continued his, his teachings and he said, if it was good, then the rest, I mean the, the remaining events that are yet to follow are good and are going to be smooth. If they're bad, then the rest is also going to be bad. So worshiping is very important. But from the, the story that I gave about that lady who was not kind to her neighbors, despite that she was doing a lot of prayers and charity, but she's going to hellfire. So it means that we have to go hand in hand. Let's look at some evidence and some proof from, from the Qur'an itself. The Almighty says in the Qur'an, إِتْلُوا عَلَيْهِ إِتْلُوا مَا أُوْحِي لَلَيْكَ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَى عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرُ وَلَذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ Which means, and establish regular prayers. Why? For prayer restrains from shameful and unjust deeds. Can you see the link? When God Almighty spoke in chapter 29, verse number 45 about prayers, he's telling the Prophet, peace be upon him, Muhammad, to tell even his followers about prayers, as prayers does what? It restrains. 
it prevents a person from doing shameful acts. So that means that actually prayers, one of its main reasons and essentials is that it perfects somebody's manners. It's not just to, to do some physical exercise or sport to connect with your creator, but it also it makes sure that you it makes you restrain from shameful acts. That's for prayers. Let's look at charity. People are in Islam are asked to give charity. And charity is a very, very, very high 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 high, high um, teaching in Islam, which we are encouraged to do almost on a daily basis. And if we don't have money, even by giving a, a piece of fruit or food or even a smile. A smile in Islam, when you smile towards somebody's face, it is considered a charity and you're rewarded even for that. So charity, God Almighty says in the Quran, it means take arms of their wealth. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is being asked to take money from the believers and distribute it to others, the poor, wherewith thou mayst purify them and mayst make them grow. That God Almighty will purify their souls and make them a better people. So one of the reasons why we're giving charity is to clean ourselves and to make sure that we purify our souls. Let's look at Hajj. Hajj is the pilgrimage which we spoke about a couple of weeks ago. When God Almighty mentioned Hajj in the Quran in this verse, He said, Al Hajju Ashur Ma'amad, Faman Farad Fihin Al Hajj Fala Rafat Wala Tusuq Wala Jidad Fil Hajj, Wa Ma Tafalu Min Khairin Yaglamu Allah. It means. For Hajj are the months well known. We know the months where Hajj is prescribed upon Muslims. If anyone undertakes that duty therein, let there be no obscenity, no wickedness, no wrangling in the Hajj. And whatever good you do, be sure that God Almighty is aware of it and He knows it. Believe me, when I read this verse so many times in the Quran before going to Hajj, I didn't understand the relevance. Because I thought that it comes straightforward and it's obvious that when you go to Hajj, you're already in a spiritual state and you will not actually have anything to make you angry or upset. But when I went there, it's the biggest test of my life when it comes to patience. Imagine you are, you know, like squeezed like sardines, you know, and you have people around you from different countries. You all speak different dialects. There's nothing common in which you can communicate. And cultures are different. In certain cultures, respecting the line is very important. In certain cultures, they don't even know what is a queue or what is a line. <laughs> Correct? So what will happen? You will be standing in a line and somebody will come and push you. And he doesn't understand that this is against the teachings of Islam or against at least your culture. So you become angry. You see people who are lost. I saw an old man who I, I swear was at least 90 years old. And this poor fellow was completely lost and he was from India or Pakistan. And he was lost. So he went to the office, like the, the help desk, to, to, to find directions. And the people there could only speak Arabic. So luckily I was there. I tried to speak English and he doesn't speak English. But at least I tried to understand, understand the body language. Put yourself now in his situation. How frustrated would he be? But I swear, we kept, I kept because I stayed with him to make sure that he would at least arrive. At least for one hour. They take us to the this side of the place and the left side and we're walking for hours, hours. And I started getting upset and I started shouting to the organizers and I was like, how come you don't have signboards in different languages? You have people are coming from over 100 countries. And I started getting frustrated and the guy was so peaceful. He had no problem. He had no problem at all. Why? He understood the importance of being patient. He understood the importance that if he gets upset, the entire thing is gone. The entire purpose of doing Hajj or the reward that you will get out of it is gone. So he understands this better than me. When you talk about fasting, we talked about how prayers is linked to manners, how fasting, uh, sorry, how charity is linked to manners, and how Hajj pilgrimage is linked to manners. Let's look at fasting. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us in one of the teachings, when any one of you gets up in the morning in the state of fasting, he should neither use obscene language nor do any act of ignorance. And if anyone slanders him or quarrels with him, he should say, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. In Arabic, it's inni sa'in. In me, so I'm, I'm fasting. 
problems. If anybody comes to you know to make you upset, you should still remain cool and patient. And this is what the fasting is teaching you. Do you understand my point? Why? Let's say I'm fasting, I'm driving, I make an accident and somebody comes from the other side and he starts shouting at me, it's your fault, and he starts swearing and cursing. If I reply back or respond back, my fasting is gone. Even if I continue without eating or drinking, the reward itself is gone. This is what the Prophet Bidya upon him taught us. So fasting is a tool to train yourself to become patient, polite, humble. These are all manners that you learn from fasting. I want to take you through some of the manners that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has taught us. And these are just glimpses, because there are books in Islam, books which are called Islamic manners. Books, and they are done in volume. So I'm just going to quickly state some of them, which I think, or I assume that some of you don't know that it's important in Islam. And let's go through them quickly. I'll be talking, for instance, about the following making peace among people, feeding wives and being humble to wives and how to treat the wives, being good to the neighbors, guarding secrets, and, and so on. Let's go through them one by one. The first one is making peace among people. And notice here, I didn't say making peace among Muslims. I didn't say making peace upon Muslims. Why I want to emphasize on that before going into the details is that there are certain religions without mentioning names. They teach manners, but they mainly teach it that you have to do it within your community, within your society, within the same believers. However, Islam, when it comes to manners, you never hear that this is to be done only with your fellow Muslim brother or sister. This is to be done with everyone. So here's a hadith, a teaching of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He said to his companions, doing justice between two men is a form of charity. And assisting a man to ride on his camel or his animal, like the mode of transportation, and to load his luggage is another form of charity. And good word, the good word that you utter, is again rewarded as a charity. Every step which you take towards going to the mosque is a charity, and removing, removing harmful things from the roads or, is, is, or the people where people walk and pass by is another form of charity. This is a very important manner in Islam. Why? It might you might think you might think that it's human nature to do see the, these things, but trust me, brothers and sisters, it is not the true case. And I'll give you an example which happened to me last Wednesday or Thursday. I was in the bus going to work in the morning, and the bus stop. I was standing. It was very packed, as usual. And then there came the bus stop, and people who started leaving the bus. However. That a few minutes I realized that the bus is not moving. The people already left, and I'm standing next to the door, and the bus is not moving. So I look around, and then I look at the driver, the driver is not there. I said, Something is wrong with the bus or what? And then until I look, I see a lot of people are looking towards, you know, over the, the steps where you take to go to the upper deck. And there was a lady who was sitting on the on the on the step on the steps, and she had her head on on another step, and she's like completely gone are just looking. She looks like a dead person to me. She's not moving at all. People are just looking. Nobody's acting. Because of my religion and because of what I have learned, I rushed to, the, to her and there was a Chinese lady standing. I said, does she speak English? Is she, is she awake? And she started saying, I don't think she's speaking English. She's speaking English. So I said, okay, carrier, can somebody give me a hand? Because 